Welcome to iLecture Online and here is another example of how to find the area between two functions. In this case they're going to be also bounded by the uh, line x equals zero which is the y-axis. So here are the two functions, let's graph them to see what they look like. Okay, the first function here looks like a 1 over x type function which means it's going to look something like this. The 10 in the numerator simply means that it's going to raise up or rise up the function a little bit higher away from the x-axis. So here's our y-axis, and here's our x-axis, and you know what? I'm going to change my limit. I'm going to make this x equal 1 because I just noticed that this will asymptotically reach up to y, the y-axis, so I don't want to uh, mess with that. I'm going to make my limit over here somewhere at x equals 1. And then my next function is y equals the square root of x, which looks like this which means that we have an area bounded right here, which we're trying to find. Uh, notice that if I only take the top portion of that function, I have a function, if I also take the bottom portion, then of course it's a relation, we don't want to deal with that. So this is the area we're interested in. That means I'm going to find a small little area element, called as a small little dA, and that is going to be equal to the height times the width, and the height is going to be, let's call this y2, let's call this y1, so it would be y2 minus y1 times the x. And notice it doesn't matter if I call the top one y2 or the bottom one y2, it really makes no difference. The reason why you put the sub subscripts there is so that you can go back and figure out which function we're dealing with. Notice that this here, y2, belongs to this function right there, so I'll call this y2, and this here, y1, is this function right there, I'll call it y1, so we don't make mistakes later on when we plug those numbers in or those values in. Okay, to find the area now, this is going to be equal to the integral from 1 to question mark. Hmm, because I don't know yet where, they two, where those two equations meet. I will have to find that point right there. And it's going to be all the da's, which is equal to the integral from 1 to question mark, uh, y2 minus y1 times dx. And of course, when I plug in the y2 and the y1s, this is equal to the integral of y2 will be 10 over x plus 1 minus y1 which will be the square root of x which is x to the 1 half power times dx from 1 to question mark because we don't know where those two meet. So now we have to solve those two equations simultaneously to find out where the other limit will be in x. Okay, let's do that. Let's set y1 and y2 equal to each other and solve for x. So we have from here we're going to set uh, 10 over x plus 1 equal to the square root of x. Then the first thing I'm going to do is square both sides. So square the left side and square the right side. So I get 100 divided by x plus 1 quantity squared equals x. And so 100 is equal to x times this quantity squared, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1. And finally, I can then get rid of parentheses, I get 100 is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared plus x, and then bring the 100 across, I get 0 is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared plus x minus 100. Wow, I have a cubic equation and I'm trying to find the root of that equation to figure out where those two lines cross. That may not be that easy to do, but then there's that synthetic division trick that we might want to try. So I'm going to take the coefficients, let's try a 1, 2, 1, and minus 100, and take a pure guess. Let's say that uh, the number is 2. Oh, I forgot a 0. Thank you. All right. So let's try that x equals 2 at that point. We plug it in here. So we draw a line, bring the 1 down. 2 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 plus 8 is 9. 2 times 9 is 18 and I get minus 82. So, no luck. Let's try a number a little bit bigger. Let's try 3. So, let's try 3 for the root. I get 1, 2, 1 minus 100. And drop down the 1. 3 times 1 is 3. That gives me a 5. 3 times 5 is 15. That gives me 16. 3 times 16 is 48. That gives me minus 52. Notice, that's a better result. It's still not correct, but I'm closer. I want to get this to be a zero, so let's try four, see what happens. So one, two, one, negative 100. Try four. Drop down the one. Four times one is four. 
that's 6, 4 times 6 is 24, that would be 25, 4 times 25 is 100, and it looks like I'm in luck. That means 4 is one of the roots of this equation, which makes sense that that might be a 4. So the rest of the equation, it looks like I can then say, okay, that means that this is equal to 0 equal to x minus 4 times what's left, and this is what's left, which is x plus x squared plus 6x plus 25. And if you look at that, that does not look like it's factorable. So therefore, there's no other roots than that. The only root I have is x equals 4. That must be the place where they meet. So x equals 4, and if x equals 4, Let's see, 4 plus 1 is 5, 10 divided by 5 is 2, y would be equal to 2. And that's the point at which they cross. Okay, now that I know that, I can say, okay, my question mark is no longer a question mark. I know that the number is 4, and my upper limit of that is 4. So here we had to employ some algebraic tricks to find out where those two lines crossed. I'm now ready to go ahead and integrate that. So this is equal to uh, 10 divided by x plus 1. So that looks like that would be the natural log, that would be 10 times the natural log of x plus 1 minus x to the 1 half, now that becomes x to the 3 halves divided by the new exponent 3 halves and evaluate that from 1 to 4. Okay, so when I plug in the upper limit I get the following. This is equal to 10 times the natural log of, when I plug in a 4 I get 4 plus 1 is 5, so the natural log of 5. Uh, plus, oh, not plus, because a minus here, so minus, uh, that would be 4 to the 3 halves power. And when I divide by 3, two, 3 over 2, that's the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. So 2 thirds times 4 to the 3 halves power, so that's when I plug in the upper limit. When I plug in the lower limit, I subtract from that 10 times the natural log of 2, and that would be minus 1 over two over three halves or two thirds times one which is simply two thirds so we have ten times the natural log of five minus ten times the natural log of two uh, i can simplify that a little bit this is equal to ten times the natural log of five over two because they have the same number in front when you subtract the natural log of five minus the natural log of two is the same as the natural log of five over two so that simplifies that uh, 4 to the 3 halves, the square root of 4 is 2 times uh, to the third power is 8. 8 times 2 is 16, that would be minus 16 thirds. Right, so far I did not yet need a calculator. And minus times the minus becomes plus, plus 2 thirds. So this becomes equal to 10 times the natural log of 5 halves. Uh, minus 14 thirds. You know what, that's good enough. I can get a calculator and work that out or just leave it in that form and that's probably good enough for our answer. So again, our approach here was we had two equations. We need to find the area between them, but it was bounded between where they crossed and the line x equals 1. I set up a vertical area element, so it'd be the height, which is y2 minus y1, times the width dx. y2 and y1 had to be identified. y2 belongs to the equation right here. y1 belongs to the equation right there. So then when we set up our area element, we make sure that we substitute it, y2, by the correct amount there, and y1, substitute that for the square root of x. And then we just integrate. We did have to follow, we did have to find the place where they meet. We solve the two equations simultaneously. We end up with a cubic equation. So we have to use a guessing technique to find the root. So you put in the uh, in the synthetic division, you put in the, the coefficients of the equation, then you start guessing for the roots, and until we zero in to where this number is zero, you found the root, then you go ahead and plug it in as your limit, and you integrate, and that's how we do that.